This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So again, we want to say good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and to God be all the glory and Amen. all the praise. Yes. Let's worship God. Amen. Amen. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean. shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your habitation, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands unless you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I'll deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You shall call up him, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And now, dear God, cover this service with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And give us your Holy Spirit that we may lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I would like everyone to uh, turn your back to him to page number 493. Thank you. 
from heaven saying there is work to do I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian band now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord yes I am on the battlefield for my Lord yes I am on the battlefield for my Lord for my Lord you know that I promised him that I that I would serve him till I die now I I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. In distant lands I try. My sinners come to God. Now I'm, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord. I promised him that I, that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit. And only as his child Around the throne of grace He appoints my soul a place Now I'm, I'm on the battlefield For my Lord Yes, I am on the battlefield For my Lord I promised him that I, no matter what may come, I promised him that I, I made God a promise, I promised him that I, that no matter what happens, I promised him that I, I'll keep my hand in his I hand, him that I, no matter what trials may come, yeah, I'm going to own him as my God.
selection and the sermonic hymn and then I'll come back with the message. Amen. Amen. Father God, yes. it's in the name of Jesus that we come. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Yes, we thank you for your kindness, Lord God. Yes. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord God. We thank you for you creating a clean heart within us mm. yes. and renewing a right spirit within us, Lord God. Mm. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your grace yes. and your mercy. Yes. We're asking you to forgive us of those things that we said and done that was not pleasing to you, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. We yes. thank you for the confidence that we have in you, mm. Lord God. Yes. You alone are mighty. You're mighty to save. Mm -hmm. We thank you for you waking us up this morning. Yes, we thank you for the food that you've given to us. Yes. Father, you've been a good God to us. You've been a good Father to us, Lord God. We cry out, Abba, Father. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy that you showed toward us. We thank you for your grace. You alone are worthy. You alone are good at all times, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that we are walking miracles, Lord God. You've given us grace. You've given us your mercy. And we owe you our lives to you today. Father God, we hide behind the cross. You alone are worthy. And you alone are good. We thank you, Father, that we submit our tongues, we submit our lives, that your kingdom come and that your will be done in us this day, Lord God. We thank you for the word that's going to be preached through Pastor Yarbrough today. We thank you for your ministry to him, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that he continually to lays down his life for his family and to his to his sheep, to your sheep, Lord God. We thank you that no weapon formed against him shall prosper, Lord right, God. Right, right, right. We thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Mm, we thank you, Father, that we wake up in joy, Lord God. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for the many tears that we've sown, Lord God. Yeah. Father, that you will wipe every tear. We thank you, Father, that you hear our cry. And we're longing for you. We're longing for the day that we see you, Lord God. But well, right now, your kingdom business has to be done. And we just thank you, Father God, for the souls that are going to be saved. We thank you for the lives that are going to be changed, the hearts and, and families that are going to be mended back together again, Lord God. We ask you, you are free to, to do what you want to do in our lives. Yes. You alone are perfect in all you do. Lord God, you know what's on our hearts. Yes. You know what's on our minds, Lord God. And you yes. said you will perfect those things that, 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 perfect, that are concerned to us. Yes. Lord God, you are worthy of all the praise. And we thank you for everyone that's homes that are represented today, Lord God. You know their cries. You know their hurts, Lord God. You know that you can heal. Yes. We thank you, Father, that you can deliver. Yes. You know those are and have addictions, Lord God. We put it down for to you because all chains are broken in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us, that ministers to us, Lord God. You are worthy of the praise and the glory. We thank you for those that are coming. And we thank you for traveling mercies today thank we thank you for them for those that are in hospitals lord god you know their cry lord god you know they want to be at home at church but father they're not able to make it but you alone hear their heart lord god and we thank you for you bringing and sending your your word that will deliver and set free and let them have this time to stay before you you alone are worthy and you are a good good god to us and lord god we thank you for all those that you have gathered together that we will worship you in spirit and in truth we thank you father for your continually moving upon us lord god you are worthy to be praised and you're oh, yeah. worthy to be glorified. Oh, yeah. And we thank you, Father, that the word of God will change us, Lord God. We thank you for those that are backslidden. Yeah. I thank you, Father, for them coming back to you oh, yeah. in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for a spirit of discernment. And we thank you for your kindness that's better than life. You are worthy and you are kind to us. And Father God, let us not take your grace for granted That's right. and That's you alone right. are our peace you have broken down every Hallelujah. stronghold yeah. and we glorify you in yeah. jesus name amen amen amen, amen. 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 amen.
Oh, yes. That's what we come to do today. Glorify the Lord. Yes, Lord. You might be going through something. You might be having some problems. You don't know how to handle them. You don't know what to do. Can we tell you about somebody that do? Well, I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus. For all your needs, all, all your needs. If you're in sin, if you're in sin, God will set you free. He'll set you free. Yeah. So if you're down, if you are down. As can be. Oh, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. For all your needs, for all your needs. Well, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. Hey, he can supply all, all your needs. If you're in sin, you're in sin. Oh, God can set you free. He'll set you free. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. If you're down, if you are down. As can be. Down as can be. Oh, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. For all your needs, all your needs. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming to you as plain as we know how. We're talking about a God that can do anything right now. Sitting on his throne, he's waiting on you to call. He's the only one to catch you when you fall. So if you're down, if you are down, as can be. I recommend, I recommend Jesus for all your needs. All your needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're coming to you as plain as we know how. Talking about a God, He can do anything right now. Sitting on the throne, He's waiting on us to call. He's the only one to catch us when we fall. So if we're down, if you are down, come on, y'all, as can be. Say it like you believe it. I recommend. I recommend Jesus for all your needs. For all your needs. I'm gonna say this one more time. We're coming to you as plain as we know how. Talking about a God, He can do anything right now. Sitting on His throne, He's waiting on you to call. He's the only one to catch you when you fall. So if you're down, if you are down. As can be, as can be. Oh, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. Hey, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. I wanna recommend to you, Jesus. Yeah, for all your needs. For all your needs. Yeah, I recommend. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend the Lord. I recommend. Whatever your problem. Great or small. Let me tell you about Jesus. He can handle them all. He's never busy. He ain't never late. You better call on him now. Stop hesitating. God is able to solve all your problems. There is nothing that you're going through that God ain't able to see you through it. So if you're down, as can be, as can be. Oh, I recommend. I recommend Jesus. Hey, I recommend. I recommend. Jesus. I wanna recommend to you, Jesus. Yeah, for all your needs. For all your Yes. Oh, you You ain't got to be down. Amen. Take your problems to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. The Sunday school lesson this morning told us That's take right. your problems to Jesus. Yeah. Why are you taking them to Jesus? Because Jesus can do something about it. Amen. That's right. That's right. You call friends, they check the call ID. Oh, I ain't got time to talk to him. Uh, when you call on Jesus, yeah. he ain't never busy. That's right. He's on time. He's always on time. Yeah. So all you gotta do is just 
Trust him. Believe him. Turn your problems over to him. And let me tell you something. I ain't just talking to y'all. I'm talking to me because I needed that this morning myself. Amen. Encouragement. There's a song that said, encourage my soul and let us journey on. Amen. For the night is dark and I am far from home. Right. Thanks be to God, the morning light appears. Amen. The storm is passing over. Yeah. The storm is passing over. Yeah. The storm is passing over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let it pass over. Yeah. And so so we're going to sing a little, little song. That, and I don't know about nobody else. It's in the hymn book, but guess what? It speaks volumes to me. Amen. Volumes. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior.
You might be here for the first time or you might be joining us uh, over the air. And if you are, I want to let you know that we're dealing with our series entitled uh, Lessons from the Cross. Our topic is Lessons from the Cross. And this will be message five uh, in this series, which is so critical, especially in these last days that we make sure we know what our foundation is. Our foundation has got to be rooted in what we know about our salvation, and that's the absolute truth, the absolute foundational truth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of our lives. And it's through the cross, our acceptance of the cross, and the finished work that was done, that really anchors us where our eternal life is concerned. There's no other way. And so what I want us to look at very carefully throughout this series is just what it is that we learn from the cross of Jesus Christ. And so what we're doing is going right through the word, which clearly shows just what it is that uh, Jesus' sacrificial death uh, shows us and what it is to us. And we're going to have to make sure that we're anchored in that because there's going to come a time where you're going to have to give a defense of your faith. There's going to come a time when your faith and your commitment to God is going to be under attack. And so you're going to have to know what the foundation is. You can't get away from it. Listen, any deviation away from that whatsoever is going to get you involved in demonic doors that will be wide open into your soul and you'll start to second guess. You'll start to doubt, you'll start to fear, you'll start to worry, and ultimately it's very possible that you can come off your witness. You and I, especially nowadays, have to make sure that we stand very firm on our witness. Amen. The world has a whole lot of things and a whole lot of theories and a whole lot of subjects that it wants you to believe in addition to what it is that has already been done, which is more than enough for salvation, which is the most important thing, and that is your soul. Anything else in addition to that, and definitely anything that subtracts from that is going to be something that's false and something that you need not uh, be a part of. And so you and I need not let what it is that Jesus Christ has done for us get to be mundane or empty or void or kind of played out in our lives. That is the foundation of our faith. It's what we stand on. It's the hope that we have. It's the truth that we hold. And we have to make sure that we stand very firm on that, especially with so much opposition uh, coming our way. And so in this fifth part of this series, uh, where we're dealing with the lessons from the cross, I want to deal with the subject of sanctification. Sanctification. But before I deal with that, uh, very briefly, I'm going to have to finish up from last week in part four, where we dealt with justification and propitiation. That is, the absolute uh, act whereby... God declares the sinner to be righteous based on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so the word justify or to be justified simply means to be declared or made right. You and I can't do that in and of ourselves. It's just too much sin. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And so there's nothing that you and I can do uh, in and of ourselves to be declared right with a holy, eternal God. It had to be something that's holy, something that's eternal. To be a sacrifice and a substitute and atonement enough for us to stand for us to cover us. So therefore, God, when he sees us, he doesn't see our sinful state. He sees what covers us. Amen. That's God himself emptying himself into flesh, coming to this earth while remaining still God in heaven, being the necessary substitute, the sacrifice in the Son of God, which was Jesus Christ, to be the very substitute for us. To be the very thing that would be acceptable to God on our behalf. And that, and being that that's done, that justifies uh, the believer, the repentant believer before God, not just temporarily, but for eternity. So with that, uh, Jesus Christ has given us the justification that's very necessary, not just a short time, not just for here, but for eternity, because a God who is all holy and all good and definitely eternal requires that kind of sacrifice, that kind of complete, perfect sacrifice. And that's just what uh, Jesus Christ was. That's what Jesus Christ is, and he always will be. And so Jesus Christ is our justifier. You and I need to know that when lies come up against us, when Satan starts lying or rapping all kinds of accusations against you and things like that, you need to know uh, that you're justified. When he tries to bring about guilt and shame and worry and anxiety about your faith and stuff you may have done and things of that nature, listen, you need to know that you're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so it's not all about your works, it's about what Jesus Christ did and upon confession and upon repentance, uh, you and I have got salvation and we've got forgiveness based on his blood, with that we're declared to be righteous 
uh, before God based on, not us, but what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And so that we're justified. And also what that does is that leads to, listen, that leads to a foundational truth called propitiation. And that sounds like a big word, but the Bible makes it real clear. And that is the act whereby God, listen to me very carefully, has satisfied his judgment, his justice, and his love all at the same time upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I couldn't satisfy God's love and God's justice all at the same time. Only the Lord Jesus Christ could do it. So therefore, that's what makes him the propitiation or the satisfaction to God. Uh, we may satisfy a lot of people, possibly you might think so, or really truth be told you don't, but definitely you can't satisfy a holy and eternal God who demands nothing but goodness and who demands judgment upon sin. That is all sin, even in your thoughts, even the depths of your heart. And so you and I need something that satisfies God outside of ourselves, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, that's the act whereby God is satisfied with our lives based on us being covered by the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's not satisfied with sin. He doesn't change his mind about sin. But what he does is, listen, he's satisfied by what it is was completed by Jesus on the cross. And so with that, Jesus is uh, satisfaction to God ultimately. Not over and over again, but for always. And so with that, he's the satisfaction. And so uh, before I get to uh, this next part, this next subject, I want to kind of close that out and I can merge right in. Uh, to what it is that we're going to deal with very briefly today. And so I'd like you to take your Bible, if you will, and I want you to go to 1 John chapter 2 and look at this whole idea of propitiation and what it is that uh, the Bible says about uh, God being satisfied and that is completely satisfied. And see, it's important that we know that because otherwise you're going to keep trying to do all kinds of things to please God. You're going to try to do this and uh, do that and not do this and not do that and kind of tally up a list of grades that you present before God and try to graduate. Look, you and I have to know that God is satisfied with Jesus. And so it's our walk with Jesus. It's our talk with Jesus' is concerned. Listen, it's the Holy Spirit living on the inside of our lives that shows us how to bring our pleasure to God by faith. That is, getting behind the Holy Spirit, leading uh, uh, his leading, uh, his guiding. And so therefore, it's all about God. It's about what Jesus did. It's about the work <clears throat> of the Holy Spirit on the inside of your life that shows you how to please God. So it all boils down to God uh, doing the work that's necessary uh, in us through Jesus uh, and through the Holy Spirit. And so what you and I do is that we uh, repent, humble ourselves, we be obedient, and we walk and we live by faith, and God continues to do the rest. And so with that, uh, God is satisfied. And so you don't have to worry about whether I've done enough, uh, whether I've done too much of this. Uh, whether I'm not doing this and all those kind of things. The Holy Spirit with conviction is going to make it very clear and at the same time, not only that, he's not going to judge you, but he's going to show you just what to do. He's going to show you where you're going wrong. He's going to put you back on track and he's going to show you how to work certain things out. And so the works that you and I do is based on the power of the Holy Spirit, based on you and I having a repentant mindset. Based on you and I being obedient to the will of God, submitting to the will of God, trusting in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and making sure that we're sensitive to the voice of God's spirit and obeying just what it is that he says. That's how you and I humbly submit ourselves to God and the works that we do is based on the fruit of the spirit that lives on the inside of us. And so it's God that uh, works through the life of the believer. It's God that does the things that's pleasing to himself. And so it's all about what it is that God does. We are his workmanship if we're believers. And so uh, what that does is that shows very firmly uh, that Jesus is the propitiation. And so I look at uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2 and uh, I want you to see what John says very clearly. He says in verse 1, my little children these things write out unto you that ye sin not. That is that you don't continue to keep on sinning. And keep in mind that your soul is saved, our spirits are in connection with God, uh, but we still got this flesh with these five senses, and so we're still experiencing temptations and all kinds of things, and so there are times when, yes, you're gonna fall off the mark. You might transgress. Uh, there are times when uh, you just might miss it. You might commit uh, certain sins and things like that, and I'm gonna get to the reason why that is in a moment. And so uh, with confession, you and I can uh, confess to God, that is, agree with God about our sins, and the Bible makes it clear that he's faithful and just uh, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To keep that in mind, that's very important. But what John is talking about here is that, listen, we don't stay in a lifestyle, in a mindset of willful rebellion against God. 
And so when he's talking about sin, he's not talking about necessarily just committing a sin or something or just stumbling and falling uh, on occasion, but he's talking about, listen, make, listen, making sure that you and I don't remain in a rebellious mindset against God. And so remaining in sin completely. And so he says that you sin not. And look at what he said next. If any man sin that is commits a sin, we have an advocate, that is Jesus Christ stands for us, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. That is based on his justice, based on his love, based on what he took on himself, which was our sins, upon the cross. That's what makes Jesus Christ totally right before God. And with the believer, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and his life living on the inside of you, listen, that's how you and I, when you and I commit a sin, can be made right before God based on the finished work of Jesus and his forgiveness uh, and his redemption on the cross. And he says, look, in verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins. That is, the satisfaction for our sins. Not just, not, listen, not some kind of appeasement or something that throws God off. But because he took on all of our sins upon the cross, that is, listen, he's the satisfaction of what it is that uh, is judged upon sin on himself, on the cross, on our behalf. So he says, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So that is the satisfactory, substitutionary, just work, atoning work of Jesus on the cross was enough for everybody. And applicable, beneficial to anybody who would believe. And so there's enough to go around. So with that, there's not some big sin, little sin. There's not enough of these and not enough of these. And listen, there's enough to cover anybody who would believe. And so with that, Jesus Christ took on every single sin. And what's going to get the believer saved is the absolute fact that you repent, turn from sin uh, by faith, submit your life to him, realize that you are a sinner in need of a savior. That's what gets you eternal life. What's going to get somebody not have an eternal life and not save is that you reject that offer. You absolutely, totally try to do it all yourself and remain in a lifestyle of sin. The absolute truth is, Jesus Christ is a satisfaction for our sin. Amen. And all that was required uh, by God in his just nature. Now, go right over in this same book to chapter 4. And I want you to look at also what John says even further. He makes it even clearer where propitiation is concerned. Look at chapter 4 and look at verse uh, 9. And he says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Now that's not living all your best life, living it up, doing what you have to do, doing what you want to do, but our lives are lived through him. That is, through his life. And that is, through his finished life, his complete life, that involves his coming to earth miraculously, that involves his death on the cross, not just that, but it involves his resurrection at the same time, and it involves his return at the same time, which we're living for, which we're hoping for, and so that package becomes the very good news, the very essence of our faith. That's how we live our lives, not based on the world system, not based on our flesh, but we live our lives through all that Jesus Christ is and all that Jesus Christ has done. He goes on to say, listen, in verse 10, he says, herein is love, that is complete, total, unconditional care. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, that is our satisfaction, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And that's how that's extended through us as a life that's lived, that's pleasing to God, in obedience to God's commandment, and that is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as thyself. That's how that's supposed to go. And listen, with that, God is satisfied with Jesus' work, and with that, listen, you and I ought to be satisfied with what it is that God has done, and with what Jesus Christ has done, and with the life that he's given to us. That keeps you from competing with somebody else, that keeps you from trying to be like the world or trying to follow and pattern behind something else because the life that God uh, is doing in your life and the things he's doing through you, through Jesus Christ, ought to be enough. It's a very sad thing for people to think that somehow this, this is not enough. And somehow if you're not careful, you'll discredit what it is that Jesus has done and kind of somehow kind of criticize Jesus' work in your life and the Holy Spirit's move in your life. It's a very dangerous mindset to have. Because with that, you'll think that somehow there's something beyond what it is that Jesus has accomplished for you. 
You will think that somehow there's something beyond what it is that uh, is involved in your obedience and your faith to him, and you'll do all kinds of things by any means necessary to try to go get it. Next thing you know, you're living your life independent of the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit and independent of the cross. That's a very dangerous thing. And so that's why you and I need to know what it is that Jesus Christ has done as far as being our propitiation. Now, very briefly, before I get into this, I want you to look at what the absolute requirements are. I want to throw this in here because uh, as we go into sanctification, it's really important to know, listen, just what it is that God requires. And you see this all the way back in the Old Testament, the very mindset and the very characteristics that God requires. So before I go further, real quickly, I can take your Bible and go to the book of Micah. That's in the Old Testament, and he's considered to be one of the minor prophets, just simply because he wrote less, the message is the same, but really it's the content. So uh, you see Micah, and um, I'd like you to go there and look at chapter 6 uh, very briefly, and what you're going to see is the requirements of the Lord, just what it is that God truly, absolutely requires. And, and at this time, uh, what you notice is that the Lord had a mighty big problem with Israel. Pretty much a lot of the same problem that he had before is that Israel was drifting over into worldly pagan ways, uh, trying to work things out themselves, and somehow kind of really drifting away from God and all that God had done for them and all that God had established in their lives and the uh, grace that he had given to them and the mercy that he had given to them and the love that he showed toward them. And now it's almost as if what God has done is not enough. And so God had a problem with Israel and, and uh, in their lives and in their lack of obedience and in their uh, rebellious ways, uh, they really had kind of personified, really outwardly and inwardly, that they are, are kind of short change in God and what it is that he had done. And so uh, look at chapter 6 in Micah and look at what the Bible says. It says, Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy. That is the Lord's problem that he's having with his people. He said, and these strong foundations of the earth, that is, all the ones that pretty much have set up their own kind of security system or doing things their own way, kind of independent of God. He says, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. And he says, O oh my people, what have I done unto thee? And so uh, in their ways, they really, of course, again, drifted away from God. And so God is one, look, it has not been enough. I have not really loved you enough and shown you enough grace and shown you enough mercy. You're trying to build things of yourself. You're trying to go independent of me. What's the problem? And so he says, uh, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? It's almost like the people are tired of God. And God is tired of their ways. And it's almost like the people getting weary with God, tired of God's movements. He says, testify against me. For I brought thee, and God reminds him what it is he's done. He says, For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. That is, way back there, God was trying to establish right standing and what it is that he required. But look at what happens. God is about to show what his requirements are, which never really changed. And verse 6, he says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before uh, the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Here's all this stuff, high in quantity, kind of valuable, but the question is, is it enough? Amen. It says, he has showed thee, O oh man, what is good. That is, God has shown you what it is that's required. You might bring all that stuff and all those things and some kind of spiritual collateral and stuff like that, but it's still not enough. Amen. He says, he has showed thee, O oh man, what is good. And what doeth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? Plain and simple as that. And he says, the Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. And uh, hear ye the rod, and he and who hath appointed. That's plain and simple, cut and dry, what it is that God requires. But keep in mind that even with that, 
It's a very difficult thing to do that in and of yourself. In fact, it's impossible to do that without yielding and submitting, being obedient to God Almighty. I mean, absolutely surrendering your heart to God. And so with that, there's the need for the absolute truth that you and I have to be sanctified before God. That is the act whereby God sets the believer apart for himself. Aside from the word, you're talking about a holy God that's separate from everything that's evil, one in his creation, particularly that which is made after his image and likeness, to be set apart from the world. Now, you and I can't do that necessarily in and of ourselves. We need God to do that through us. And so with obedience and faith in God and with doing the things that really God requires by our hearts being submitted to him, you and I are sanctified before the Lord. Now, with Jesus Christ being our justifier, with Jesus Christ being the very thing that satisfies God, with that, you and I can be set apart for God. That's what sanctification is. To be sanctified is to be set apart. Listen, that's the one-time act whereby God sets apart the believer from the world, from the contamination of the world, for God. That is completely everything for God. God does that one-time act that's made possible by Jesus Christ's death. After that, there's a process based on the fact that you and I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us whereby we're constantly cleansed and purged from the old nature. That's called the sanctification process. It's almost like you pick out your clothes and uh, they might get clean at first, but then you wear them over and over again and really they're gonna have to be clean. You got a built-in washing machine on the inside of your house, of course, that cleans those clothes over and over again. So with the Holy Spirit, what you and I have got is like a washing machine and a dryer on the inside of our souls that constantly gives us the cleansing that's absolutely needed. There's times when, yes, you may get a little dirty, but you get that cleansing over and over again that the Holy Spirit gives on the inside of your life. One time act, separating you from the rack, separating you away from all the dirty rags and all that other kind of stuff, but on the inside, there's the constant continual cleansing whereby you and I are made and the process perfect before God, whereby we're absolutely being changed over to the mind of Christ. One time after being sanctified, set apart for God, then the sanctification process built in on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit, whereby, listen, the Holy Spirit begins to change you and I over to the image of Christ and give us the mind of Christ. This is absolutely done by the power, by the strength, and by the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. You and I can't do it in and of ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. And what I want to do is I want to take your Bible real quick, and I'm going to have to close with this, and look at how this sanctification process happens as opposed to what we've been looking at as far as the sacrificial system is concerned. That was a temporary cleansing, a temporary atonement uh, done by uh, animals and things like that. Uh, but that, of course, truly wasn't enough. Ultimately, that typified and foreshadowed what it is that the ultimate Lamb of God and Jesus Christ would ultimately do for us. Once you and I receive him into our lives and his authority and his finished work, the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of your life. And listen, he presents us as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. That's how that goes. That's how you and I are supposed to submit to God by that work that's done completely by God through Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit. Take your Bible, uh, lastly, and go to Hebrews chapter 10. And I want you to see how all this pans out because what you're going to see is a strong, sharp, very faithful comparison between what is done now, what is complete now, what is absolute now, and what was incomplete before. Now before we've been looking at uh, substitution and sacrifices and things like that that was done uh, in the Old Testament all the way back to the very beginning, all the way back to Adam and Eve and God covering them uh, with uh, animal skins and things like that, but all that was temporary. Keep in mind that was incomplete. And so with Jesus is complete. And so in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, right back throughout the whole book of Hebrews, the writer makes it clear that uh, Jesus Christ is far better and that he's the completion of all the stuff that was started back in the Old Testament. And so it's useless to try to continue on all those systems in the Old Testament. It's useless to try to continue on in the law and, of course, omitting the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, really what that does is that sets you up with a religious, self-righteous mindset. And there are people who have a very religious, self-righteous mindset to try to please God with all their own sacrifices. I want to tell you that obedience is better than sacrifice. 
the word makes that crystal clear that it's better to live your life in obedience to God than throwing out all this stuff that you think will please him. And so that's what is made very clear uh, in Hebrews. And I want you to look at chapter 10 very briefly. I'm going to just pretty much read this and pretty much self-explanatory. And so uh, look at what he says in, uh, uh, look at verse 1. He says, for the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and uh, not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. So it wasn't meant for to be made perfect. As a matter of fact, it was to show you your sinfulness and show you the holiness of God and show you your need for the Lord Jesus Christ ultimately. He says, for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins, but yet they did. Still was in sin, listen, still had all kinds of sinful things going on, so obviously those things weren't enough to do it from the inside. It may have dealt with a lot of things on the outside, uh, which was still temporary, but on the inside, it didn't do the cleansing that was needed to be acceptable to God. So in verse 3, he says, but in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. <clears throat> For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast not has no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written uh, of me, to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst thou pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. Now watch this. He says, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. By the which, where we are sanctified, see that? That is set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. <clears throat> That's not year by year. That's not over and over again. But he says, listen, once by Jesus Christ for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering, offering testimonies, the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, gotta stress this, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You see that? That's not temporary, but that's forever. And that's a faithful promise. He says, whereof, well, uh, watch this, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. And the Holy Ghost is in us. He says, well, after that, he has said before that it is the covenant or agreement that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws. Watch this. This is very critical. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write them. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That's an absolute cleansing of sins, past, present, and future. That's done by Jesus Christ one time. And listen, that's purged with the work of the Holy Spirit on the inside of our lives. And that's the promise that you and I have. Which is a great lesson to learn from what is it Jesus Christ done on the cross. Now, you want to tell me what's better than that? You want to tell me who or what is worth following more than that? There's no promise greater than that. And look at what he says finally in verse 18. He says, now where remission of these is, that word remission uh, just simply means uh, forgiveness. He says, there is no more offering for sin. That is, it's absolutely one time fully paid, fully done by Jesus Christ on the cross. Because he is our one-time, sacrificial, substitutionary, atoning, justifying, propitiation, satisfying, sanctifying, absolute, total, complete sacrifice to God Amen. on our behalf. Amen. Not just temporarily, but for eternity. Amen. And my question today is, will you learn that lesson and will you accept it in your life and be made complete today? Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus.
Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood.
Thank you. Praising my city all the day long. At this time, I just want to give an invitation. I want to ask you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to know him today. You need to know him for salvation, for the sake of your soul. And if you don't, I'm sad to believe, I'm sad to report that really you don't have eternal life. And there's no life that you can live aside from Christ. That's better than having eternal life and peace with God. And it's through his death on the cross. So I want to ask you today, will you receive him into your life? Wherever you are, wherever you might be watching from, you need to make it up in your mind that you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. He'll set you free for eternity. He'll save your soul. He'll search the depths of your heart. Repent today. Turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ. Or maybe if you've gotten away, you drifted from fellowship with God, you need to come on back with God. Make that decision up in your mind right now from right where you are, wherever you might be. You might be in a sinful state right now, but just like the prodigal son, realize that, look, this is not enough. What I had was far better. You need to come on back to the Lord, come back in fellowship with God. Make that up in your mind today. You're not promised tomorrow, so I will get it right, right here now. In fact, you're not promised the rest of this day. And so if God has been pecking on your heart about something or you've heard the invitation over and over again, you need to respond. Don't make another decision in your life until you make that decision first. That's going to set everything else in order. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to pray for you. Dear Lord, I just want to come in the name of Jesus and just thank you, Lord, for being in the midst of us. Thank you for our service, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for everything you've done for us and the things that you're going to do for us. I ask, dear Father, that you continue to order our steps and keep us in your care. Dear Lord, I ask that you research our hearts. Forgive us of our sins. Pray, Lord, that you will continue, Father, to just um, remind us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Help us out trying to figure it out our way. We want to get behind the cross. We want to follow leading the God and the Holy Spirit so much. So, Father, I thank you. Continue to purge out sin. Continue to purge out any demonic activity. Everything is not like you. And I pray, Father, that you help us to focus on your kingdom first and all your righteousness. And know, we know that everything else will be added unto us. Amen. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to give the benediction, and right after that, uh, if you hold just one second, the deacon's going to take charge of uh, the offering. And all that can be ready to go from there. So if you'll stand to your feet, I'll dismiss. Now may the God of all comfort and grace establish your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore, until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.